Hi, I'm Kirby Allison. Today I'm in London at the Piccadilly Arcade. Of course, this place is no stranger to the well-dressed. For over a hundred years, the shops in this arcade have been helping gentlemen get themselves out with some of the best menswear in the world. Here at the North End, we have Bud Shirtmakers, which has been in this arcade arguably since the beginning and is amongst their most well-known stores. What I love about Bud is whenever it comes to London-based shirt makers, they are the only one that I am aware of that continues to cut all their shirts here on site. Their shirt makers are located just upstairs and continue to practice their craft the same way that they have been for decades. Today I'm excited to walk inside and I'm going to be commissioning my first bespoke shirt from Bud Shirt Makers. So join me as we step inside this incredible institution and experience British craftsmanship at its best. Uh, Darren. Kirby, <laughs> good to see you. Oh, it's so nice to be back in London. Yeah, and good to have you back. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I have to say I've been really looking forward to this opportunity to commission my first bespoke shirt here at Bud. Yeah. So we've got a lot of exciting things in store for us today, don't we? Yeah, well, I mean, we're really looking forward to it ourselves. Yeah. So. And one of the things I've really appreciated about Bud is, I mean, really it's an institution here, yeah. you know, in London. I mean, not only has Bud been kidding out the well-dressed for decades and generations of the well-dressed, but they've been doing it in what is arguably the most well-dressed city in the world. And Bud, which has been located in the arcade really since its opening, mm. has always been a part of that. Oh, absolutely. So Bud is a 1910 company. Um, we've always been in the arcade. Uh, I think we the, are the oldest residents here in the arcade. So, um, yeah, I mean, we were initially across the road. Okay. The, ori the original shop was across the road. Just across on the other side of the on arcade? On the other side of the arcade. You can still see Bud underneath the lacquer that's on there. <laughs> that's um, but the, during the blitz of the Second World War, that side of the arcade got bombed. No kidding. Okay. Uh, but this side didn't. And Mr. Bud just went... Oh, that's free. So we can just, and we've been here ever since. So, really? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of you to, to say the things you have said, but yeah, we, we, we are, you know, traditionalist, old school, yeah. you know, and hopefully still doing things the correct way. Yeah. Um, you know, the white tie, we're the only people who still, you know, um, supply what I would call pucker white tie, yeah. boiled in in fronts and all the accoutrements for that and black tie as well. So yeah, yeah it's an well, institution, as you say. Well, especially where white tie is so mm. much driven by the rules. Yeah. Uh, it's essential to have someone that you can rely on that really understands those rules and has helped men follow them for such a long time. And of course, in London, that's Bud. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we're, we're very sort of lucky, really. I mean, we've, we've got Andy Rowley and, and, and John Butcher. I mean, An institution of themselves. Absolutely. And um, you know, Andy, that, of course, is front of house. Yeah. And then John being the senior Head shirt maker been upstairs. Been here 50 years. So, you know, and they we're lucky enough to have them and impart the knowledge to me and to all the other young guys here yeah. and to keep the tradition going because otherwise it all gets lost. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's one of the things I really love about London is that you have these multi-generational, you know, family-run firms <laughs> that are still really transacting today the same way that they would have been possibly 100 years ago, 50 years ago. Yeah. I mean, I think that's why people like coming back because it's the kind of the comfort factor. That yeah. It, Nothing sort of changes too much, mm -hmm. you know. It's kind of, you know, reassuring. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, and uh, yeah, we often kind of get, you know, people running in sort of ashen and sweating. <laughs> I need a bow tie for tonight. Think, You're in the right place, yes. don't worry. So, yeah, yeah. Now, of course, Bud is exceptionally well known for the kit, right? The bow ties, of black tie, white tie, cummerbunds, pocket squares, ties, robes dressing gowns, pajamas, I mean, yeah. incredible, incredible accessories. But it's the shirts and the shirt making that in some ways, I have to say, I'm most impressed by. Because of all the London shirt makers, Bud not only is the only one continuing to do all the cutting on site, but Bud has one of the most tenured staff of shirt makers there is, right? Starting with John, who's been here for 50 years. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, um, yeah, shirt making is the, the kind of, the the bedrock of the company. Mm -hmm. And it's all been built on top of that as well. Uh, but yeah, John's been behind the board upstairs for 50 years and he's been behind the counter down here for 35 years. Amazing. You've been here, what, 20? Yeah, no, but not, not quite. I mean, I think over a decade now, I've been in the shirt okay. going for 
nearly 35 years. Okay. But 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 here for, for just over a decade, yeah. and James and as well. James. Um, he's he's been here at least 10 years. Yeah. Um, and, and that continuity of of kind of tradition is so important because shirt making uh, is an oral tradition that has to be practiced, right? So having someone like John that's been practicing it for 50 years, I mean, imagine how many patterns he's cut. Uh, and you know, you that's been doing it for 35 and James that's been doing it, you know, for 10 plus. I mean, again, whenever it comes to bespoke, experience really does matter. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's an accumulation of kind of years and, and, and you know, what we've each seen and learned, you know, yeah. and I mean, I think anyone who sort of turns around and says, oh, well, I know kind of more than you and this is how you do it, you know, is probably lying to you because yeah. I can, you know, the three of us upstairs with that, you know, wealth of knowledge, yeah. we're, we're learning from each other all the time. And, yeah. and the, the person who benefits is the customer, somebody Absolutely. who comes in and be, come, gets measured. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, that's very exciting, that's why I'm here. Um, and so I guess, you know, walk me through a little bit the bespoke process. Is it something that is only offered here in London? Is that a part of uh, what you guys extend through your trunk shows? Uh, and then, you know, where does it begin? Are there fittings? And then, you know, until how long is yeah. the shirt able to be delivered? Yeah, so um, it, it is something that, that we offer on the trunk shows as well, because not everyone can, can get to London. Okay. So, you know, historically it's always been, you know, a trip that's done to see our customers in America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we offer the same, exactly the same service and process there that we do here. So the process works a bit like kind of most shirt makers elsewhere. It's um, a minimum order of four, Okay. With us, you know, but from the four, we'll make you a sample, um, cut you your own pattern from scratch mm -hmm. individually for you. Um, we keep that pattern here on site upstairs. Okay. So that remains here. And once we get that pattern nailed, you're happy with it, I'm happy with it. We then complete the rest of the order. Okay. You can then order as many or as little shirts as you need at okay. any time after that. Um, that will remain the same. You know, we're a bit lucky. We have more time on the initial fitting mm -hmm. than say suits, but mm -hmm. we don't have the luxury of inseams and taking it in and letting it out. So yeah. we have to make it as a finished item. Mm -hmm. But once we've got that nailed, it's pretty plain sailing after that, unless yeah. you kind of change shape or, you know, um, yeah. you know, the pandemics and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, people put on Trying to run a marathon well. like yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, if, if, that's, if you're happy with what we're doing, that will remain the same. Yeah. And you can order as many or as little as you need yeah. at any time. Also. So that first, so you take measurements and then make a trial shirt. That yes. trial shirt's not included in the four. It will be one of the four. Okay. Because, you know, how I've learned and, and as the business does, it's, mm -hmm. you know, if you order, say, like a twofold 170 Soella mm -hmm. cotton shirt and we make it in just a plain poplin cotton, rather, okay. nothing wrong with it, but yeah. you make it, you know, it's not going to give you a feel of the shirts the that you've product. actually ordered. Okay. So we like to kind of do it yeah. in something that you've ordered sort mm -hmm. of thing um, as well. So it gives you a proper feel yeah. of how things are going to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the process is one that is evolutionary, right? So you have to have a few shirts made, you have to launder them, you have to wear them. And that's, you know, through that process of refinement allows you to really ultimately, you know, kind of land on that perfect fit. But if yeah. you don't go through that process, you'll never get there. Yeah. And I mean, that's where the kind of the time is involved in that initial kind of fitting, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of fittings, sample shirts, get it on you, you know, because, um, you know, everything's different. Everyone's different. Yeah. So there's little bits and pieces that you'll see on the initial fitting. You do another fitting, it's better, but you're thinking, right, I need to do that. Yeah. So that's the time and the effort process mm -hmm. there. But yeah, after that, um, yeah. and you've laundered it a few times, it mm -hmm. should be where we both want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. And where does the pricing start out on bespoke shirting? So they start at three, four, five pounds okay. per shirt, mm -hmm. depending on, on what material yeah. you choose. And that's but a that, standard that, fabric. That, that covers a lot of bases, yeah. a lot of bases. So the only time it goes up, I mentioned the Soyella, the, the yeah. high-grade yarns, yeah. that's when the price goes up so yeah. from there. So. Well, uh, what's the first step then? Okay, first step would be to get the measurements done. Okay. So I think we need to kind of you know, get your jacket off and, yeah. and, and, and start the measurement process for you. Exciting. Thank you. Okay. First thing we need to do is start taking some measurements. All right. So if you could just loosen the tie and top button for me. That'd be great. Right. 
So we'll start from the top and work down. How many measurements are there? So probably about 20, 25 measurements, all kind of the specific ones. And then there's little ones that I take, like first button position and things like that. So there's a few. So it's a full bespoke. Full bespoke fitting. So <clears throat> one of the measurements that's so personal is the collar size. Mm -hmm. What I think is the correct size, people go, I would never wear it that small, I never wear it that big. So mm -hmm. I always kind of bow down to what people are comfortable and used to wearing. So, I mean, how does that feel there yeah, as a size? I think that's good. Yeah. Okay. Like a, you know, a collar that's not loose around the neck. Yeah. One that I can also still breathe with. Yeah. Oh, we, we did have customers who would always kind of, they weren't happy unless they had a red mark at the end of the day around their neck where it was gripping their neck, so, yeah. So an extra one that I take is this first button measurement, because that's always a useful one, because sometimes it can eradicate any stuff that's going on up the top here. And where do you try to place that? How do you decide the positioning? Well, you can see, I mean, you know, people, we often get people to wear a shirt when they're mm -hmm. measuring them. There's no good over a t-shirt because we can't see these lines and this line yeah. and, and things like that. So if they're wearing a shirt, if the first button isn't causing any problems, we, go, well, we know that's correct. Okay. If it is, we undo it and then we find out where's the best kind of position, literally, mm -hmm. just by doing that, so, okay. So generally, how do you like the shirts to fit, Kirby? Yeah, I think tailored, but not fitted. Yeah, yeah. Something that's, that comes with wisdom, yeah. or otherwise known as age. Absolutely. <laughs> well, as I say, I always say to people, we want this to be practical. Yeah. That's the thing, so. I mean, certainly not baggy. You guys, I'm sure, don't make baggy shirts. So well, it's important not to have a bunch of excess. But if it's too tight, yeah. you know, you have a heavy meal, and next thing you know, you're pulling buttons. Yeah, when I, and I do say that to people as well. I said, I like to make it practical. I want you to be able to go out, have a good meal, a couple of glasses of red wine, and just be comfortable. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, you've got to be able to wear it the entire year. Yeah. You know, not just over the summer. Absolutely. That's fine, I can see it. Look at that, still 32. Ah, oh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> just your feet together. I got in a little bit of trouble today at Ken Hayes. Yeah. That's fine, that's fine. That's because you've been running marathons as well, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. So we try and get as much information now with the measurements from you. Um, better to have too many than not enough, Yeah. you know, and, and guessing kind of, well, oh, should I have done this and should I have done that with it, but yeah. How is shirt making different than tailoring? Like suit making. I mean, because you know, suit making there's a lot of drape and the fabric responds differently, and it's a different, much more involved fitting process. Whereas there's a degree of precision to shirt yeah. making that doesn't necessarily exist in suit making. Yeah. Well, we, we have to fit the body. You know, I know tailors do as well, but we're we're more direct onto yeah. the body. So um, well, the tolerances you know, are much yeah smaller. much tighter, and we don't have the kind of luxury of kind of inseams and you know padding and stuff like that. Yeah. So it, it, it is a more kind of net item. And if the shirt isn't a good fit, then the suits that you've bought oh, yeah. don't look as great. No, it's no question. With, with, with not without the, the, yeah. the right um, shirt underneath. Well, and that's one of the biggest selling points of having a bespoke shirt, in my opinion, is the fact that you can have the confidence that all of your shirts fit the same. Yeah. So therefore, all of your suits look proper on your shirts. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So we, we, we try and work hand in hand with with kind of the tailors and the customer with the suits that they've got. So now the next thing that's quite personal on, on, on a shirt is the sleeve length. Okay. And probably the most point argued with tailors as well. Oh, your shirts are too long yes. or your shirts are too short. So yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah. That and then the length of the skirt. Yeah. Or the length of the jacket. Yeah. Okay. Right. 
So if you just take a little pace backward for me, just one pace, and look straight ahead. So we're just what we're doing now is just kind of seeing the, the level of your shoulders. So which one drops more than the other, if any, and, and how much we have to drop it. So we draw a straight line, you know, with with the top of the slope, and that gives us the drop on each shoulder. So a little, little bit down on that side. So we'll make a note of that and transfer that onto the paper pattern. Yeah. And are these measurements the same measurements you would do for made to measure? No, these are much more um, in depth and, and precise. Made to measure, that will be more um, on, we'll try a shirt on you from stock, like mm -hmm. a classic fit or a tailored fit. Um, and that will act as the fitting. So we go, right, okay, we know that the 15 and a half body in the tailored fit mm -hmm. on the made to measure works for you. We'll make sure we get the correct sleeve length for you. Mm -hmm. Choice of cuffs and choice of collar. Okay. Well. And also a, a collar size. Because mm -hmm. you might be a 15 and a half body, but yeah. you might be a 16 collar, mm -hmm. or you might be a little bit smaller. Or yeah. you know, so. And then, you know, as you said, sleeve length is all very, and very it's such individual. A, yeah, it's such a personal thing. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of get it to where we think it should be like sitting in the break of your hand, mm -hmm. but you're going, I would never wear my sleeves that long or yeah. that short or vice versa. So yeah. again, I always kind of bow down to what kind yeah. of people are more comfortable kind of wearing. So. I guess there's more margin of error in the body of the shirt, but for me, if the sleeve length is off, that'll drive me nuts all day. Yeah, and it can kind of, I mean, I've, you know, you, you do fittings with people and sometimes when the sleeves are too long, it can, believe it or not, make the whole shirt feel and look, this is too big, yeah. you know? So if you kind of get it to where it should be, mm -hmm. you know, it just where you can see your hand, it, it yeah. kind of it changes the kind of whole aesthetic. So, yeah. And a proper sleeve length again helps make a suit more comfortable. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So your natural waist, taking a measurement for there. So where where we take it in, mm -hmm. that gives us the point of where we do it. So. And is that your normal watch? Uh, yes, this is, I've got one that's slightly smaller, but this would be the largest. Okay. So we always take a measurement over that just to make it a little bit big, bigger so it just slides over that yeah. for you. And again, we'd also sort of ask whether you wear a, a double cuff or a, 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 a French cuff or a single cuff, button cuff. You know, generally I'm a barrel cuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've got a few French cuff shirts that I'll reserve for London. Yes. But most yeah. of them are otherwise barrel. Yeah. But I always say to people, because some people are always a bit like, well, I'm having shirts made, I'm having bespoke, I should have double cuff shirts. And I always sort of say to them, well, do you actually wear them? Mm -hmm. Well, no, but I'm having, <laughs> you're wasting your money because yeah. nine times out of 10, they'll either sit in the wardrobe yeah. or you'll get, you know, I can't be putting cufflinks on at 8.30 in the morning or yeah. whatever. So, but I always try and get people to have what they usually wear. Yeah, have made what you wear, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And that's the greatest joy of bespoke is actually wearing it. Mm. The comfort, the ease, the consistency. Yeah, absolutely, so, you know. And then we'd kind of go through, you know, we've got the cuff style mm. and then we'd go through a collar yeah. style. So we'll do a two button cuff. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, so talk to me a little bit about collar style because, you know, in made to measure, right, you have the available collar styles that are the house collars. But in yeah. bespoke, I mean, are you drafting a completely bespoke collar from scratch or what are the kind of the points of modification that may not exist through made to measure? So what we do, yeah, made to measure, it, I think we still kind of offer, you know, a selection in made yeah, to measure. So course. we have our, our bud collar, the bank collar, button down. So there's, there's plenty of options. Size, plenty yeah. of options. The, the bespoke <clears throat> one is, you know, vast. So. We copy collars for people. I'm not averse to doing that. Some people, you know, well, you've come to us, we will make you your own collar. Yeah. That's fine. But if someone says, look, I like this collar style, mm -hmm. can you recreate? We go, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we'll copy it as kind of best we can. Okay. Um, but what we do, we have a range of kind of collars. Mm -hmm. We have to give someone a starting point. Yeah. You know, so we'll hold a collar up against you and say, well, look, this is our semi cutaway. Yeah. But you know, what I suggest we do is cut it back a little bit more, make it a little bit deeper, okay. make it a little bit firmer. Yeah. So we make it your collar. Okay. And um, I think when we're making a pattern as well, a lot of it is done freehand, mm -hmm. drawing it out freehand. And with collars, you know, 
you know, some people come in and say, well, I like the bud collar, you know, yeah, I'm happy with the bud collar. Can you do the bud collar? Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I'm making the collar, I'll probably make it a bit deeper at the front, put a bit more spring on it, cut it away. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll always make it an individual collar. But, yeah. you know, that's just artistic license, or so, mm -hmm. if you like, yeah. so to speak. But everyone gets, you know, the collar that they want. And nine times out of 10, when people are getting things made, they'll say, yeah, well, I like that. Yeah, but can we, you know, make it a bit higher, cut it away. So we'll, you know, they yeah. get their own individual collar. Yeah. And sometimes as well, it's shape, you know. Sometimes you have to spring the collar where it sits down on the neck a little bit more, so, yeah. And that really goes back to the eye of the, the shirt maker, the cutter, yeah. to really kind of interpret that for the customer. Yeah, and you know, then that comes to sort of, because they can't sort of visualize it, mm -hmm. we probably can a little bit more, but when they have the fitting, you go, we'll do the collar up, we'll do the shirt, they go, right, okay, I see what you were driving at now, so it becomes more tangible and reality yeah. when you've got the shirt on their back, mm -hmm. so. Great, well, so, what do you think on the collar then? What would what would you suggest? Where would you take me? I think we need to kind of go like a semi-spread type yeah. of collar because you you have wonderful ties, nice knots that you mm -hmm. tie. So what we want to do is give you enough tie space at the top with a semi-cutaway. Yeah. You know we have the bank collar, mm -hmm. you know, which is our semi-cutaway collar. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you know we could elaborate on that. Yeah. Like slightly you longer points. I mean, I think you know with my existing shirts we lengthened the points a little bit and we raised the front. Yeah, um, and then yeah. I've got a relatively long neck. Yeah, and you can carry it. It looks more elegant as well. Sometimes it can be a bit overpowering because you're nice and slim. If you, if it's too big, that becomes the focal point. Yeah, you, you know, but you need to kind of balance. But it can't it. be exaggerated. Everything has to be balanced, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what we'll do, we'll give you a nice sweep on the on the semi cutaway, so it sits under the lapels of your jacket quite nicely. Okay, and you can definitely, you know, have the extra depth on the front of the band. Mm -hmm. So it sits a little bit prouder yeah. for you. So, yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now that we've got the measurements, I mean, is there a particular fabric that you suggest a uh, first shirt be made in? Well, I think. Stripe versus solid. Well, again, customer's choice, mm -hmm. really. But for you and I, yeah. I think your introduction to Bud and mm -hmm. Bespoke, you know, the Bud Stripe. Yeah. Really, why not? Of course. Let's, let's do it. Go I mean, something iconic. Um, We've got a couple of different colors, but for me, you know, because I know you wear a lot of blue and a lot of kind of uh, gray with your mm -hmm. suits, you know, the bud light blue. So it has a slight kind of jacquard to give it additional texture. It's got right? a satin stripe satin, on okay. the white, and then it's edged with a black stripe, which makes it a bit more distinctive and throws out the stripe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a good, all rounder. It get you out of jail on most counts, <laughs> yeah. to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, even with a blazer, um, sports coat, because mm -hmm. it is a nice light blue, not the kind of darker blue yeah. as well. It will probably work quite nice. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful recommendation. Thank you. So Thank you. And I think I think you'll enjoy wearing it yeah. as well. So. What about stripes? I mean, stripes generally are more difficult for a shirt maker, just with the pattern matching. Mm. Not really. No. Not really. No. If it's, you know, sometimes when they're kind of checks and one ways and stuff like that. Um, it can, you know, be a bit more of a, you know, harder morning for you at the cutting bed <laughs> sort of thing. So you just got to make sure, right, I've got this as it should be. But that's that's why people come to us as well, yeah. and any shirt maker really. Yeah, that's just parkour. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I also noticed that you like a monogram mm -hmm. on your shirt. Should we do, should we do that on here for Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's one of those nice details. Yeah. Okay. And I think where you have it on the left waist. Yeah. Very elegant. What is the bud uh, shirt maker position on monogram positioning? For the record. For me, <laughs> for me, I think you've nailed it. Left okay. waist is always very elegant. Yeah. You know, left breast, I don't mind, but. A little bit higher, one? like up here? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. But I think nine times out of 10, that's where it yeah. goes. Just where the last rib yeah. is, is. What about the cuff? You see it oftentimes there. Yeah, you see it. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> my, my opinion as well. <laughs> Right, so let's just get a measurement of where we kind of want that to go. Whenever you see the cuff monogram, normally it's done in a block font very largely. Yeah, yeah. In a bright color. With the bright color. So, yeah. So we've got your position where that should be. So just the style now. So the monograms are done by hand. Okay. Not on yeah. a machine. So we have our lady who comes in once a week and picks all the monograms up. Mm -hmm. 
So you, I notice that you've got like a, the classic block style, yeah. which is nice, which I don't mind. But, you know, what do you think about the kind of the stepped? Yeah, that's nice. I mean, I mean, it kind of looking at these and the, I mean, is are any of these kind of traditionally or unique to Bud? Or just not, more, not, not unique you know. to Bud. No, that's the kind of the, the sort of the, the house styles, if you like, that you'll see in most shirt makes. You've got the block letters, yeah. but you've got the tailed script ones, yeah. which are a little bit more fancy. Mm -hmm. But that would look quite nice. Yeah. It's not too ostentatious. Yeah. It's a bit different. I think it would be fun to mix it up a little bit. So let's try something like this. The stepped one. The stepped, yeah. Yeah, on the left waist. And then for the light blue bud stripe, what kind of color? So these are the threads that she actually yeah. uses. And so I like something that is a little bit, nothing with too much contrast, but what do you think? With one of these two right here, the azure yeah. or the bright blue? Yeah, I think the bright blue would look quite nice. Yeah, I don't want it to there. get lost, right? No, but at the same time, I don't want red. You have to remember it, it kind of, it twists mm -hmm. to a darker color. Okay. So I think that'd be a nice contrast yeah. without being too, you know, yeah, too obvious. Loud. Yeah. yeah, you can't be too obvious about this right? And what about the crown? How do I get a crown on top of my monogram? Well, I think you need to see Her Majesty around the corner. Uh, okay, for one that's of right. Yeah. <laughs> do you require credentials for the crown? Um, you know? <laughs> no, you used to. <laughs> okay. But not anymore. I think, you know, you, you can buy them. anything on the internet. That's now, right. So. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Excellent. So we've got the measurements. We've chosen a fabric. We'll have yeah. a trial shirt made up yes. in this, right? Yeah. The first of the four. Uh, and then generally, how long does that take? Um, generally, we try and aim for about you know, four to five weeks, okay. dependent on how busy we are. We are a small operation. We yeah. cut and make everything ourselves, yeah, cut it here, and in our workshop in Andover. At this particular moment in time, it's about eight weeks. Oh, really? Okay. But, you know, I'd rather sort of be honest from the outset and say, yeah. look, it's going to be a long time. Mm -hmm. Explain why it's going to be a long time. Yeah. And most people go, well, oh, okay. That's eight weeks okay. is pretty reasonable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. Uh, well, great. Well, that's exciting. I couldn't be... Uh, any more honored to finally be able to well, experience the, the full bespoke process from Bud. And it's made at the workshop in Andover with an incredibly skilled, you know, and highly experienced staff of people. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, we're super lucky that we've got the workshop yeah. and the girls there. I mean, there's a wealth of experience upstairs, but that pales into insignificance when you see kind of an Andover. Andover. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that's where the magic happens, yeah. in my opinion. So. Well, that's, and that's one of the things I love about London is that these sorts of products are still able to be found here in London. You know, at these same stores that have been serving people's fathers, grandfathers, and great-grandfathers. Yeah. yeah, and it, yeah, I mean, it's a responsibility for us to keep that going. Yeah, to preserve yeah. the craft. Absolutely, to absolutely. preserve it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And continue to carry that tradition forward, so. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I try my best, I, yeah. I'll try, yeah. Well, I couldn't be more excited, my Darren. Absolute pleasure. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. And an absolute pleasure again, yeah. thank you, Curly. Yeah. Wow, well, how exciting to finally be able to join the group of elegant men who for generations have been having their shirts made here bespoke at Bud Shirt Makers. Of course, I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for watching. We've measured Kirby. Once we've got the measurements on the sheet, it then all of these numbers, measurements, they get transferred onto a paper pattern. So you can see we've got the semblance of a sort of front body here, hem, center hem, front yoke. So this, this area here, all these lines here, so that's the, the front here. This is how you're gonna draft your armhole from here. And there's no pattern for it or anything like that. It is just freehand. And then the kind of cuff pattern is there. Like that. 